And that's Brandon Ayuk. And I don't want to focus on Brandon Ayuk's um, talking yesterday at, at the presser. That's I, I thought it was great. I thought he had a great segment. But I thought the key things were from Kyle Shanahan. So we're going to listen to two clips. Um, the first one's about a minute long. The question was asked, man, can you talk about Brandon Ayuk basically being with Trey everywhere he is for the offseason and what that implies? I'm impressed how Ayuk's carried himself. I mean, I thought Ayuk, I think everyone knows how it started off last year. Um, just he was a little bit behind where I wanted him. Um, and he accepted the challenge and handled it like a man and got so much better and just went to work. And I think that showed off to, I think that showed to everyone um, as the year went through. It showed to his team especially, or the quarterbacks, the way he came back for the offseason. It, it was it was awesome. He was so prepared and um, one of the leaders of our team. And it continued into the offseason. I you know, some guys just hang around the quarterback, so people write articles about it, and they can get brownie points. But that's not Ayuk style. So I, I liked, I liked where he was before he left, and the fact that he was with Trey for so long makes a lot of sense because um, he seems pretty determined. And the bunch, I mean, they were just down by us working out. They went to go run some suicide hill or something they call it. Um, Lynch did it with them. Lynch didn't win. Um, and then when they were done, they came over because it was right by my house. Um, we were just gonna go out to lunch and. They went in the ocean for the first time. That was fun to watch. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, there's so much there to unpack. But, yeah, you're right. Anytime Trey has been working out, Brandon and I use there. The chemistry, the commitment, and the offseason, like that is what's so important about the future of the 49ers is this commitment to work. Commitment to work. They don't. There's no clauses going into Ayuk or – Trey Lance's future contracts about putting in film or workouts. That's not what this team is, right? Uh, which I don't know if you guys caught it yesterday. Uh, I, I started, I kept a track of my, um, what's it called? My film because uh, for Patreon and whatever else. And so I kept uh, just an open tally of how much time I spent watching film yesterday. Um, you know, the Kyler Murray whole four hours of uh, film a week. Yeah, here's what I hit. I hit 112, an hour and 12 minutes yesterday, um, doing the Trey videos and all that kind of stuff, um, doing a project on Jordan Willis, uh, all this kind of stuff. I spent an hour and 12 minutes. I'm a terrible content creator that, like, <laughs> like why is this guy getting paid all this money? And it just, some people just don't have the work ethic. It's hilarious. Um, not with Trey and not with IU, but that does not mean. Ayuk hasn't had a wake-up call. Now, this clip, I, and I, the reason why I played the previous one is because I think it's set up very, very well. The issues, the quote-unquote doghouse uh, that Ayuk went through and where he is now, I think that's a big deal for me. So here is Kyle talking about the evolution of Brandon Ayuk and what he went through and probably the most detailed account we've had so far. I, I think this is incredible. Important. Um, it's people you got to go through experiences to learn stuff. I mean, people can tell you everything they want, but you don't really know until you go through it. And I think that was a, the cool thing hearing from Brandon because his rookie season was COVID year. And so he didn't have anything in the off season. He just showed up here and that we didn't even know until about two weeks before we showed up, whether we're having a season or not. So he was a little behind and then training camp was kind of a joke for the whole league. Um, and so the season was kind of weird. And then we had so many people get hurt and he had to play a ton. Um, but that's all he knew with the NFL. So his his experience is, man, I just kind of showed up and, and I started all year and people say I'm going to be one of the best guys next year. And he does have that ability. And But he thought that was NFL. And the next offseason, um, COVID still, we didn't have the right rules. And he didn't he didn't know he had to do anything until camp. So he just came a little behind. He's like, oh, man, this camp's tougher than last year. It's like, yeah, last year wasn't camp. And then you get into the season and it's, man, this is different. And I think Brandon, instead of blaming other people and making excuses, he worked, didn't say a lot, just kept going to work. And he's a smart dude and he is perceptive. And he learned, wow, th this is right. This is totally different. Man, I'm going to be ready for year three because year two was really my rookie year. And that's why he's so much far ahead right now. And sometimes sometimes guys got to get cut to learn that. And that's, that's what you hope guys don't have to do. Um, but guys got to learn it somewhere. You got to figure things out. And, you know, it, it's – people sometimes can get lucky. And I think the whole Brandon IU situation is interesting. You know, whenever I was a teacher, uh, I taught junior, seniors almost predominantly. And I would tell them all the time, do, do you know what the 
number one, like relating factor, you know, whether this is causation or correlation, doesn't matter. I think it was the Brookings Institute that put this out. And I would tell them, I was like, do you know what the number one factor in determining college GPA is? And they're like, IQ, all this, they say whatever. No, 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 high school GPA. Why? Because what you do is who you are and that will continue. And so, yes, there are stories of, you know, because you'd always get the same conversation with certain seniors like, oh, this doesn't matter. I'll turn it on or I'll start working hard once I get to college or whatever else. And, you know, stories like that. And you'd get players like that, like, oh, it doesn't matter. Once I make it to, you know, college and get my scholarship, then I'll take the weight room seriously. I'm like, no, 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 that's not how this works. It's not how it works. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. But B.A. has gone from he showed up and it worked. And Kyle kind of detailed that, but it took going through some rough patches to finally learn what it meant to be a pro. And thankfully he hit that after like week five of last year. Now it's funny because people consider last year a down year for Brandon. IU. not if you look at the numbers, right? You just look at receiving yardage, his rookie year, he had 748 yards last year. He had 826. He went up. But he played in more games. He only uh, played in 12 games his rookie year. He played in 17, um, you know, last year. So it, it's interesting. You know, it had the same number of touchdowns, five each one. Um, his catch rate went up. Um, his, you know, yards per target went up from 7.8 to 9.8, which is huge. And we're not even to his potential yet. We're not there. Trey Lance to Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk's best game, if we go back to or best part of his game, if you go back to what he was able to accomplish at Arizona State's the deep ball. Well, guess what? Jimmy cannot throw the deep ball or chose not to throw the deep ball. It doesn't matter. Not trying to turn this into a Jimmy conversation. It's different when you have Trey Lance, who has a freaking rocket arm, one of the strongest arms in the NFL. Um, so Mosquito, he says, who do you think ends up with more receiving yards, BA or Debo? I think Debo will. But I think it's going to be closer than most. I mean, if you just look at last year, right? Um, yeah, I mean, Debo was on, you know, pace to break the freaking world in receiving yards. But if we just look at receiving yards, I want to make sure I get this uh, correct. Ooh, let me go down just a little bit more. Here it is. Uh, receiving yards last year, Debo 1405, Brandon Ayuk 826. So you're talking about a 600 almost yard difference. That's going to shrink down. I think Debo will get closer to 11 to 1200, and I think Brandon Ayuk will get closer to 900 or 1000. That's the way I see it. That's not a bad thing. Uh, people are like, oh, he doesn't even get 1000 yards. Really? We're a top five running offense. Figure that out. It's about efficiency. It's not about comparing his numbers to um, Mike Evans, uh, one of the most pass heavy offenses in the NFL. Like, it's different. It's totally different. It's not the same. You're not comparing similarities. This is a running offense, and you're looking at efficiency metrics in yards per target, which he's got almost 10 yards per target last year. That's pretty damn incredible. That, that You're averaging a first down every time you throw the ball to Brandon Ayuk, and that's only going to increase. Only going to increase. Boy, Frank Gore. I'm listening to a 49er rush. Niners all day. That's brain sits home.